Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a refresher video on heart failure. We already have an extensive video on heart failure earlier in the channel, so please go check that out um, to learn more about the subject. Today is going to be more of a refresher going over the key and relevant uh, aspects and information for heart failure. So let's begin. Heart failure, uh, by definition, is when there is an inadequate cardiac output leading to an inability of the heart to meet its metabolic demands. It's quite prevalent in the population, so it's prevalent in between 1-3% to of the general population, and it's much more common among elderly patients. It can be, heart failure can be classified in many ways, so it can be classified um, as left ventricular failure, which is more linked to symptoms going to the lungs, such as paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, nocturnal cough, di uh, exer ex exertional dyspnea, uh, orthopnea, fatigue, poor exercise tolerance, um, cold peripheries, etc. Or it can also be right ventricular heart failure, which, uh, which presents more with systemic symptoms of the rest of the body. Uh, for example, peripheral edema in the ankles or sacral edema, ascites, um, pulmonary stenosis, as well as other symptoms such as ascites, anorexia, nausea and vomiting, facial engorgement and epistasis. Left ventricular heart failure and right ventricular heart failure may occur independently from one another or they can also can occur together, which is known as congestive cardiac failure or chronic cardiac failure. Um, now, talking of such, the other way of classifying heart failure is acute heart failure, which is essentially a new onset exacerbation of heart failure or chronic heart failure, which is usually categorized as a combination of both left and right ventricular heart failure or a heart failure which is chronic in nature and has been progressing and getting worse over time. We can also categorize heart failure as low output heart failure and high output heart failure. Low output heart failure is when the cardiac output is reduced and so there is an increased and therefore it fails with increased exertion. And high output failure, although rare, is caused by anything that is going to increase the metabolic demand on the heart. So this can include things like anemia, pregnancy, hypothyroidism, Paget's disease, arteriovenous malformation, and beriberi. To diagnose heart failure, we can do a series of bedside bloods and imaging. Bedside includes ECG, but the gold standard uh, for heart failure is to do a blood test to look for a peptide called NT-proBMP and the gold standard imaging is usually an echocardiogram. We can also do a chest x-ray to look for certain findings. So we'll go through some of the chest x-ray findings here. Upon chest x-ray of a patient with heart failure, uh, we can remember the findings with the mnemonic ABCDE, A standing for alveolar edema, which presents as bat wing opacities, B for curly, 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 curly B lines, C for cardiomegaly, D for dilated upper lobes, and E for pleural effusion. And these five things on the chest x-ray would suggest heart failure. Uh, we've already gone through some of the signs, and as I said, Left-sided heart failure is going to present with pulmonary congestion because the blood is backing up into the heart and right-sided heart failure is going to present with anything that's going to be quite systemic, so sacral and peripheral edema, raised JVP and cardiomegaly. Um, in terms of the severity, we can classify it using the New York Heart Association, so it's uh, numbered from 1, 2, 3 and 4, uh, going from best to worst. Uh, and it basically looks at the, the, the level of physical activity the patient can do and the level of um, symptoms they have of heart failure. So in 
stage one, they have absolutely no limitation on physical activity. And they can do any form of physical activity without becoming breathless, fatigued, or getting symptoms of heart failure. In NYHA2, um, heart failure is present, but they're comfortable at rest. And however, ordinary physical activity, so just like walking, um, is going to cause them to feel breathless, fatigued, and palpitations. Um, and in stage three, um, they're also comfortable at rest, but less than ordinary activities that are uh, lead uh, that require increased physical activity. For example, playing sport, go walking up and down the stairs, is going to cause them to feel breathless or fatigued or have palpitation. And in stage four. Any form of activity, whether it be at rest, ordinary physical activity, or less than ordinary activity, is going to lead to discomfort, breathlessness, and fatigue. Now, to remember the management of heart failure, we can split it in. We manage it differently based on whether it's acute or chronic. Uh, with acute, to use the mnemonic uh, ELM not to remember uh, the management. And if you think, so L standing for loop diuretics, M for morphine, N for nitrate infusion, A for oxygen, if the stats are less than 94, and P for positions to sit in them. And if you think about it, naturally, this is what you'd want to do with a patient with heart failure. Heart, patients with heart failure have increased level of edema or fluid overload. So we want to give them a... Uh, aldosterone antagonist um, such as furosemide sorry a loop diuretic such as furosemide to get rid of that fluid overload we want to help to manage their pain uh, if they're breathless we want to give them oxygen um, and also with symptoms like orthopnea such as difficulty breathing with lying down we want to help them sit up uh, to improve that um, their ability to breathe. And if they're very breathless or they have signs of respiratory failure, we can also give them additional help, uh, such as CPAP. Now, in terms of chronic heart failure, um, the conservative management is always to give a annual influenza vaccine with a one-off pneumococcal vaccine. Um, and we can then also split... The management into based on whether the heart failure has got a reduced ejection fraction so less than 40 percent or a preserved ejection fraction so more than 40 percent with pro bmp if their ejection fraction is reduced the first line we want to give is an ace inhibitor with a beta blocker such as ramipril with bisoprolol if they're not tolerating the ace inhibitor switch to an angiotensin 2 receptor blocker such as losartan candesartan if they're not tolerating that, switch it to a hydrolyzine with nitrate. This is particularly true if they're of Afro-Caribbean descent. And if the symptoms still pers persist after the ACE inhibitor and the beast blocker, or the adjuncts if they're uh, intolerant of the ACE inhibitor, if the symptoms are still persisting, then you want to replace the ACE inhibitor or ARB with sacubitrolil, Valsartan, especially if their ejection fraction is less than 35. If their ejection fraction is less than 35 and their heart rate's over 75, you want to give them either Bradine. Um, and if they are of Afro Caribbean descent, give them hydrolyzine with nitrate. And if they've got signs of AF, then you want to give them digoxin. Now, the other thing is surgery. If a patient has a prolonged QRS interval of greater than 120 milliseconds or three small squares, we may want to consider cardiac resynchronization therapy. There are a couple of drugs that you should know about which may in improve the mortality benefits of patients with chronic heart failure. And this can be remembered with the mnemonic BASH, B for beta blockers. So bisoprolol, cardio carvedilol, A for ACE inhibitors and ARBs, S for spironolactone, and H 
for hydrolyzine with nitrate. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment down in the comment section below. Thank you.